Bird, 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 bird! Get him, get him, get him, get him! Yeah! <laughs> Round Babe was right! Round Babe was right! I'm feeling, I'm feeling spry. Hey everybody, it is the 28th of January and I, you know, I couldn't be I couldn't be more excited. I I could be, but I don't know how I would be. Um uh, you're going to hear a lot about you heard about it last week when I interviewed uh Rachel Harrow with uh, the Collegiate Group of Pheasants Forever. There's going to be a lot of Pheasants Forever talk coming up because Pheasant Fest is coming up. And as usual, my title sponsor kind of went Let's just say overboard, okay? Ben just sent me this email. He says, wanted to let you know that we're going to promote our second annual Pheasant Fest event. So if you were at Pheasant Fest last year, Onyx had a completely monster party, after hours monster party. I think it started at 9 o'clock at night. I can't remember exactly when it started. But anyway, they're doing the same thing, okay? So at Pheasant Fest... They're going to be hosting an after-party offline party on Friday, March 1st at 9 p.m. at the Ramcota Grand Rushmore Hall. There's going to be live music from the Dam Jammers and a chance to win some prizes. It, it, it's going to be, there's going to be pull tabs, free beer from Line and Kugels. It, I don't know what else you could – I don't know if you're not going. It's just because, you know – Life got in the way. You don't want to miss this. On top of that, Onyx has a giveaway. You can you can go. We'll put the, we'll put it in the show notes. We'll put it on Instagram because I don't. Really, everybody knows I don't do show notes because I'm lazy. But you can go to Onyx Maps and go for Hunt slash Pheasant Fest giveaway. You can also by entering there by going to Onyx, you can enter to go there a day before on Thursday. Okay, and see trampled with turtles. They're they are going to give away a pass, backstage pass, to see trampled by turtles concert on Thursday, the first of February. No, the when is it? Come on, Ron, get get your shit together here. The 29th. the twenty ninth of February. Trampled by turtles is going to be giving a concert right in Sioux Falls, and if you enter the contest through Onyx, you. You might be on, you might even get, they might even put you on stage. Like if you know how to play a, sing a song or who knows. I, I don't think that's part of it, but you don't want to miss this. So the title sponsor of this show is almost the title sponsor of, of Pheasant Fest. <clears throat> and speaking of Pheasant Fest, I, I was looking at the map the other day. We're, we're laying out our booth. We're kind of, we're expanding. We're having an extra bar, more room, because almost every one of my sponsors, and friends of mine are going to be there. It, it, it's, I've never seen this many. Here, it would be easier for me to tell you that Walton's will not be there, but I'll bet you'll be there next year because I happen to know where Pheasant Fest is going to be. And Boss Ammo is not going to be there. Everybody else in my booth, Gunner, my buddy Jack's going to be with the Gumleaf Boots. Just to the, We're going to take the curtains down. We're going to stretch right into the Mossberg Booths right across the aisle is going to be my truck and another truck with four-wheel campers on it. Right across the other side of me is going to be Garmin. Right down from them is going to be K9 Athlete. Purina's there with the big Purina stage. W is going to be in the building. Alder Grove, who made my dog box for my four-wheel camper, is going to be over there with Buddy in the W. So you want, wait, don't buy any dog equipment, leashes, don't buy anything till you go to Pheasant Fest because W is going to be there in force. My friends at White Lake Hunting Lodge are coming out. They're going to have a booth. And one of the guides, a good friend of mine that we see every year when we go to White Lake, Tate Martinson, Martinson's Red Point Vigila. Red, well, it's Martinson's Red Point Kennel specializes. And I'm telling you, they are the best Vigilas I've ever seen. So this is going to be almost... On my side of the world, it's going to be like a HDP fest, but it's just going to happen to be in, in Sioux Falls, 
and we're going to happen to hold it during Pheasant Fest. So I think I technically covered everybody. Onyx, Gunner Kennels, Boss Shot Shells, Garmin, W Supply, Waltons, Mossberg, Four Wheel Campers, K9 Athlete, Pro Plan, Purina. That's it. And, of course, in my booth, too, the Upland Insta- Institute will be going. We'll have probably have our Cornhole for Conservation game going. Stop by. We're going to have a, an L-shaped bar. We're going to have... We're going to have everything. Well, you just bring your own drinks up and sit at the bar with us. It's Mossberg is going to supply a bunch of bar stools for it. It's just going to be. What I want you to do is walk the floor, go see a couple things, and then just hang out over on our end. It's going to be unbelievable. That's it. That was easy. I'm, like, look at that. I got that done in five minutes and 19 seconds. That is a record. That is truly a record. Oh, the other thing is, too, behind the dog. That is the film project. That's let's call it the production company that I'm doing work with, and uh, our last, our our latest episode just came out. And it's with Bob Ferris on the Poodle Pointer. You can go to behindthedogfilms.com. You can watch that. We are getting a gazillion people writing about how fun it was to hear that history and the stories. B- Bob's a natural storyteller, and that one is knocking it out of the park, and you should go do that. Now, if you're a cheapskate and you're not really interested and you like Googling stuff, maybe in three or four months you'll be able to watch snippets of it on YouTube. You don't want to do that. You don't want to miss this one. It's BehindTheDogFilms.com. Watch Bob Ferris and the Poodle Pointer. It's like a documentary. It's like Werner Herzog couldn't have done a better job than what we did with Bob and the Poodle Pointers. I, I, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, okay, obviously I just did another minute and a half, but I couldn't help but tell you that. But make sure, if at all possible, come to Pheasant Fest, everything that everybody's doing, all the sponsors, Onyx, treating every. I mean, where do you go to get free beer? Where do you go? Well, I know where you go. You go 9 o'clock on Friday night, and you get free beer from Kugel, courtesy of of Onyx, our title sponsor, your title sponsor. It's everybody's title sponsor. Boy, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed doing this episode. I brought Jackie and Anna back from the Michigan Department of Conservation, the two COs from our county here in Muskegon, and we sat down and we had some fun and we told some stories. I had Trent Hardy, one of my good buddies here that travels with me and hunts with me, and him and his wife, Heather, Go to North Dakota with me. I wanted Trent to sit in on this, throw in a little. Uh, he, he's been checked by the CEOs a lot of times. I, I don't know. I'm just lucky. Either that or I'm just not out there enough. I don't know what it is. But we had some questions for him. We had some stories, a lot of laughs. And then later, if you're a Patreon patron, we had a little trivia game that was CEO-centric. How's that? CO, that I'm going to put out on Patreon for all my Patreon listeners. It was just a f- fun little thing we did at the end. Wanted to see if we could stump the COs. And I didn't have the questions. Trent had the questions, so Trent emceed it. And that's going to be on, well, we'll probably release it to everybody like next year. But if you're a Patreon patron, you're going to be able to listen to that trivia game. All right? So I don't know what else to do. Sure, now I'm at eight minutes plus the intro, you know, or ten. I guess we're pretty much normal, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Oh, sorry. Love you girls more. All right. All right, let's see. Oh, oh, I think we got it. I think we got it. Hey, everybody, it's Ron Bame, and you know what the name of the show is. I'm with a good friend of mine, Trent Hardy, who has never been arrested in his life. Nope. But I had him here to accompany me with a podcast with Jackie Miskovich. Did I get it right, Jackie? You did. And Anna Cullen. And is that right, Cullen or Cullen? Cullen. I mean, I'd like to have it be cool, and that'd be a little bit cooler. But <laughs> it's Colin. It's Colin. It? It's Colin. <laughs> so uh, Jackie and Anna were on the podcast uh, two and a half years ago. They are from the, the, the Michigan Department of Conservation. They are game wardens in Muskegon County. And uh, I ran in originally. I was trying to figure out, how did I even find you guys? And then I listened to the podcast last night, 
And you and I met at the FedEx store. Yeah, we were I was, I was mailing shipping. stuff. <laughs> I was shipping a gun. Contraband you were shipping, but I was shipping a gun uh, legally. Of course. And, uh, and I said, hey, could I get a DNR officer to come on sometime? And, and then you brought Jackie over. And so I really listened to that last podcast. And I'm like, I don't want to sit there and go like, I don't want the career path. We don't need to talk to you about the academy because people can go back and listen. I, I, I like listening to it again because what you guys went through, um, it's a little harrowing. You know? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. We don't have to relive that. Yeah. No. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. I, I'm going to start out with two things. One, I begged and begged, and finally I got to do a ride-along with the CEO, right? That's yeah. Let's use yeah. the yeah. CEO. I got to ride along with the CEO, and this one I got to ride with Jackie, Supposed to be in a car, and it turned out to be for my betterment because it was in a boat, and I could still smoke cigars out on the water because <laughs> she wasn't going to let me smoke inside of her patrol pickup truck. But uh, the first question I asked Jackie, oh, yeah, that dog. Hey, Annie, go lay down. Thank She's you. trying to find a comfy <laughs> spot. A comfy spot. Um, when we pulled out with the boat, the first thing I asked was, like, how uncomfortable is it walking up to people who are busy hunting, and do you get a lot of brrr? And I was pleasantly surprised. It was like everybody wanted to chit chat with you. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you have to go to charm school for that stuff in school? Like, do they teach you ways to talk to people, or you just do whatever comes natural for you guys when you pull over people, or not even pull over, pull up to them? For me, it's more whatever comes naturally. Like, I just converse with people. Just you're having a conversation until you find something wrong. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, everyone's a but person. But there's no handbook for, like, no, oh, no. things not to say. I will say, though, if you don't know how to, like, if you're a little socially awkward and you you come in this career path, like, you're, yeah. and you don't know how to talk to somebody, you're going to struggle. Yeah. Right. I mean, because we, well, we literally start, interact with people all day. sort that out probably before you ever made? I'd like to think so. Yeah. 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 Trent, how many times have you been... Because you're out there all the time. Yeah. How many times have you been questioned, stopped? stopped a lot. Che- <laughs> <laughs> At least two or three times this season. Okay. Yeah. And I was telling Trent before you guys got here that I've been stopped once in South Dakota, and I was stopped once in Michigan out on the River Flats of all my years. Wow. Now, now I'm not saying that the crew before you two weren't, <laughs> weren't doing their job. <laughs> Somebody was in the coffee shop more than they were in the field. I, I got stopped once and checked for a limited ducks. And I was actually carrying my friend's ducks in a, in a trapper's pack. Oh. And so when I dumped them out, he goes, are those your ducks? I said, well, half of them are my ducks. And that guy over there is, and he says, what's he doing? I said, he's talking to a friend that was hunting this morning. And he was like, his radar was on for me, yeah. right? Yeah. And he got, he's like, uh, well, why don't you call him over here? And his name's Jeff. And uh, my daughter, my wife must be walking her corgi out there. <laughs> um, corgi. So I said, Jeff. I just screamed out Jeff. And he's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking to Richie. He's actually my insurance agent. Oh. <laughs> and, the, and the officer's getting a little perturbed. And I did not do this on purpose. I said, Jeff, the DNR wants to talk to you. And he looks at me and goes, there better not be anything wrong with anything I find today. I was just trying to light a fire. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he knows I'm just chatting with another hunter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, What's it like when you chat, when you get checked? Oh, it's it's always nice and personable. Um, Is it? Yeah. So it's not just Jackie and Anna? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't have anything to hide, so it's just them coming, doing their due diligence, and, you know, and a lot of times, because they, like, ice fishing, when they're out checking every single tent, they know who's catching fish and who's not, and if you start to know the right ones, and be like... Where the fit? You know, you get you get tips, and you know. Yeah, Jackie yeah. was getting quizzed on where the bite was going on for the perch. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah. yeah. So you're not doing anything wrong. There's nothing, nothing wrong. Just stop and talk to them and show them that you're doing everything I right. Get, the two times I've been stopped, I'm like, I'm all adrenaline up. What are you hiding? <laughs> so yeah. funny because like <laughs> you can fear in the truck, and you can tell when people are nervous too, and they could be, you know, it could be like the most 
the easiest contact, you know, some, let's say somebody coming back from their, you know, deer hunting or something and, right. um, you just know, they're, the they're wearing, the yeah, they're yeah. wearing orange, you know, everything's unloaded, you know, you're just having a conversation, but they see your truck pull up and you hit the brakes and you walk out and go talk to them. I mean, it's just like, you'd think that they had like six untagged deer in their truck or something. <laughs> like they just, they pull out their credit card and they give it yeah. to you on accident. And it's like, okay, yeah. man, take a breath. Like, yeah. I'm just, I just need to see your deer tags. Like, yeah. like it's not, yeah, I'm no. not searching your vehicle. You're not going to jail today. Just need to see your deer tags. I'm not saying I don't get nervous. You know, it's, it, yeah. it can be nerve wracking. And yeah. then you're like going through, you're like, okay, I have this, 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 and this. And that. like, I have everything, you know, I did that my checks this morning or whatever, right. you know, but then you always are double checking yourself yeah. or double guessing and just making sure you do have everything but it's but i've never when had you go year. out when you go out Trent, like do you recheck like i i kind of blame everything on being a lazy old guy right <laughs> and when we when we checked all the duck hunters on muskegon lake it was mostly guys trent's age yeah we, there was only one old guy at the end and <laughs> yeah, he, he knows did. better <laughs> he's he not dumb it. enough to go out in the late season he didn't split. know better he didn't know better though he messed <laughs> up he trusted he trusted the sporting good store to, to get him to cry oh, yeah. that was yeah. that's, that's, um, anyway i now i'm fussing with my my thing here again my why is it my hold on a minute um anyway so i do, i do, like i just so when we were out, there's a thing on with the federal duck stamp. You got 30 days to get it affixed to your. Well, you just have to have it. In, it's 45 days. You have 45. Uh, you can buy the e stamp. Right. And then it's 45 days, and then you have to have it in your hand. Signed. So, yeah, signed in right. your hand. It doesn't have to be affixed to anything. It can be on the same paper, but it has to be signed and in your hand with right. you as you're hunting. Um, what we were running into is it was past the 30 day or four, 40. 45 days. But on that e-stamp, it says after 30 days, if you haven't received That's your stamp right. yeah. in the mail, uh, contact contact diligence. yeah contact yeah. this phone number. Was there an actual issue on the other end, or were people just not checking their mail? Or you well, know? it comes in a very nondescript envelope. Yeah. I mean, it does say federal duck stamp yeah. usually, but it's, <laughs> I'm like I, eagle eye in the mail, yeah, like, waiting for <laughs> right. it because I don't want to. But if like a significant other checks the mail and they're like, yeah, I don't know I don't what know this what is, is, looks like yeah. junk, yeah, throws it away. Then it's. Oops. Yeah, and then you forget about it. Yeah, right. but then you really shouldn't forget about it either. No, I no. I ain't forgetting about it. Right. It's expensive. <laughs> it too. is like those yeah. are those are just 26. duck hunting. Yeah, duck hunting in general. I mean, there's a lot of things that you like. We literally go through a list of like, okay, base license, migratory bird, waterfowl. Like, yeah. we go through everything that you have to have, and it's it's not just with with deer tags where like I go buy my deer licenses and I can go out hunting. Yeah, get your, in your base license. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it. There's just a lot more. Well, and you got to worry about lead shot, plug shotguns, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So yeah. there's just a lot more that goes into waterfowl hunting. So that was a really good ride along for you to go on because yeah. like that way you can see all the moving components and like say like okay there's there's a lot to that goes into just checking one hunter let alone yeah, right. a, a sit group of six that come out of a marsh and you're just like whoa hold on one second guys it's gonna take a while it's yeah. gonna take me yeah. a minute and if they have birds everywhere so it's um we, we were greeted nicely though i mean yeah like the people that the, that one guy in the tender boat i mean i remember you saying oh you, you didn't want to get out in the middle of the the spread yeah he said oh do they have pf pdfs yeah or pfd yeah. Personal, Personal location location device. Device. Not Adobe Acrobat. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> and I just thought it was cool. Like, God, I should have studied better and I should have went to college and become something like that. Because it feels like you just get to be like almost friends with like the county after a while. Now it's two and a half years since we, you know, got together. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, not to talk career pass but has it has it been is it getting is it more fun the longer you're here or is it harder the longer you're here i think it's fun i think it's more fun the yeah. more you do it because like i mean originally i had an officer when i first got hired on tell me like you're not going to know what the heck you're doing for about three to five years after oh, really? that yeah. oh yeah after that i mean you're going to know the laws right but as far as like getting in the swing of things yeah. like after after five years you should know what you're doing you should know how to work certain things and you should kind of get your your rhythm going and i'd say that's that's pretty accurate i mean we're come we're past yeah. coming up on six years here and and it's it i'm finally feeling like all right i got this yeah 
You don't need any help. I don't, yeah, I find, finally, I don't, exactly. Yeah. Know the exactly. county better and know the people in the county, so oh, I help. Was, I was kind of, sh I don't mean this because you're women, but I was impressed by you backing up a boat and putting the boat back in the barn and pulling the hitch out and the hitch went, like, Nobody does it that well. <laughs> like, sure hit, like I lose my hitch pin every other time, and I never put it back in the toolbox. You guys got like this checklist in your. They they drilled it into our heads because yeah. the last thing you want to look like is an idiot. Yeah, Adam, yeah. yeah. Oh, I had a bullet wrong. Yeah. So so then I, I could never be a DNR officer. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember my my step three, um, which is our field training process. It's broken up into three steps. Um, I didn't really have a ton of boating experience when I got hired on and he created, we had this vacant boat launch that was just a giant parking lot essentially. Yeah. And we set up cones and for eight hours I backed my boat through serpentines and really, yeah. I mean, you do it, you do it until you, you can do it with your eyes closed. Yeah. Wow. And did in you my, do the same thing, or did you have some? Well, in my step, did you have some backing up a trailer experience? <laughs> so, in my step two, uh, in in the process, I was backing up snowmobile trailers, which are even harder to back oh, yeah. than yeah. boats because Single they axle, have the they small. have the short tongue, so it's harder. Yeah. And I was having to avoid huge snowbanks on either side, and it was just big enough and to fit all, that that's snowmobile all the trailer. Practice sessions. Yeah, that's I was all on training. Yeah, in the academy. I was backing in on a probably a more used road than I should have been using. So I was going and doing a 90 degree turn yeah. with that trailer into the... I don't think I told you how I got my CDL license in Chicago. I drove a beer truck <laughs> for, I think it was two years. And I'm still not hearing my voice all the way. I'm, I'm getting a little panicky about that. All right, there we go. Oh, that's better. Anyway, I had to get a... You could drive on your license with another driver. And what he was doing was just letting you move from stop to stop. You really weren't supposed to be driving the semi truck, you know, the kind with the slide up doors, yeah. you know. And I finally learned how to back into the barn enough, and I drove it around the city of Chicago enough, and I had to go get my license. So I had to go to the DMV in Illinois, and at one point you have to parallel park your semi. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was kind of going to go because oh, everybody no. hates parallel parking. <laughs> yeah. But if you, do, if you could do it with a trailer, you <laughs> should be able to do it yeah. on the street, right? And it drives me crazy when people don't know how to use their mirrors, right, yeah. to, to back up. Anyway, I was pathetic. This semi just looked like, <laughs> and this guy says, let's do another lap around the course. It's this big unincorporated part of Cook County. And uh, he says, all right, pull over here, pull up to this curb. I said, okay. Thought he wants me to do it again, right? He says, what kind, what's your premium beer at Pabst? And I said, uh, it's Andecker. It would be like the Michelob of the Budweiser world. He goes, you have some on board? I said, yeah. He says, take two cases and put them over by those trees. <laughs> don't, don't park. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to watch you parallel park again. It just cost you two cases of beer. <laughs> that's how I got my license. <laughs> that's great. And that's the only way I would have passed. I would have never made the boat thing uh, and the snowmobile thing. Before we pass the boating stuff, you guys were out checking diver hunters? Yeah. Were you out checking diver, like out in the middle of a big lake? Or were you check, or like in marsh? Like when I was well, on the ride yeah, when, yeah, when Ryan was with you. We only popped out to the big lake because For, we had a complaint. Yeah. Mm. So we had a complaint that we were checking on, and it turns out it wasn't even those people that oh, we checked. Right. Yeah, yeah they I've, were never, all... I've never even seen anybody out big lake, uh, like on, the, uh, on Lake Michigan. Oh, we go, we go out there yeah. quite it's a wild. bit. Yeah, it I've is so seen... much fun. When the old squaw come in, oh, yeah. heavy. Oh, yeah. Um, that that's fun to work and i think within the last like two years we've really made a priority to have a presence a out there. big big presence out there um and i mean when those birds are in like that so heavy i mean you you push a raft i mean there's easily it's a thousand, wow. a thousand. i love it I, I do it all the time yeah oh I do you love it yeah oh man and that's so there's like that just like throws another kind of curveball into like checking a mm -hmm. bolt, right? Because mm -hmm. you got your tender bolts and you got your layout bolts. Um, so we bring our our twenty foot tie out there, and uh, it's I mean it handles those yeah. the three waves. foot waves yeah. perfectly. And you're still able to like get close to that t uh, to that layout, layout boat, boat so that you're not yeah, and you're not dipping in the water uh -huh. yourself, hanging uh -huh. over the side because right. it sits. Granted, well, like three slower. foot waves might be a little much <laughs> for a tender to to check a layout boat um, layout hunter, but um, 
I mean, definitely making contact with those tender boats mm-hmm. and getting mm-hmm. kind of. I, a feel I'm surprised for that there's contact. that many people out there doing it. Oh, oh it's, it's great. Yeah. It's, you can scan the horizon of Lake Michigan and just like and just them. pick them out one, mm-hmm. two, three. I mean, I think so you one. So do it up by your place, or do you come down this uh, way? Muskegon and Pentwater. Both. Uh, yeah. Stony Lake as well. Out of Stony Lake. You get checked out there. No, that's why I was asking. I've never. I never get checked, checked out the, the water. In the marsh, you know, puddle duck hunting, but like yeah. big diver, diver hunting. On Maybe the big that. Lake. What county is that you're in? Well, I've done it in both. I mean, and what one do you live in? Oceana. Okay, well, they only check on Saturdays. <laughs> just, just a little. Well, I don't know. The only days I, I don't. Off. I can't speak for Oceana. <laughs> <laughs> but we were out. Uh, we went to the east side this this year to uh, Lake Erie diver duck hunting over there. Oh, you there. did, yeah. I mean, that's massive, massive diver duck hunting stuff over How there. How about the amount of hunters? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're everywhere. And we Did you see nope. any enforcement out there? No. Nope. But the... the <laughs> oh, my the, gosh, Ron. Wait till I just throw it. Let's, do, yeah. let's like do a ride along across the state. Let's <laughs> so, go to Washtenaw County. You may not see us, but we right. may be there. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of the things, too, is like a lot of people don't realize we are there. Right. Well, I'm sure you, know, you could sit back with binos and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, I had a, a side story. I was telling my son-in-law that I was riding with you or boating with you, you know, and uh, he said, he said, which officer was it? And I said, Jackie. And he goes, this taller one or shorter one? I'm like, how many times you've run into him? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, no, it would have been, not that he knew you, but yeah. he said it would have been the one you mentioned, Jackie. He goes, yeah, I was out at the Muskegon Wastewater where he's got a permit to deer hunt, and he was out there with a spotting scope, but it was a really long one hanging out the window. And he said, you pulled up like Hawaii 5-0. I think that, that was, was me. Her. Oh, that was yeah, you. Yeah, that was me. Oh, that's it. You're the one who harassed so my son-in-law. In, <laughs> in, 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 my def- in, in, in his defense, you can't. I was still sitting in my truck, so you couldn't see how tall I was. Right, um, okay. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I saw him because I glassed him. I was like, what is this guy looking at? <laughs> and I, um, I mean, I had to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i had to have been shoot i was on the other side too and i just see this thing sticking out of a window and i'm like radar going off so i beat feet over there and um, he's like i'm just i'm just scouting i'm just scouting i'm like, I'm like you think it was a gun I was like, oh, likely story likely story no i could tell it was, oh, a, it was scope a scope of some type so um but you know it's just, just yeah, you had a check. So that was yeah, my son-in-law. That's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he lives right off of Maple Island there. Yeah. And he, when they moved over this way, he did. He, he's like, I don't know where I'm going to go hunting. Said, There's tons of spots to go hunting. You live off of Maple Island. Mm. Yeah. So he's he's been deer hunting out there at the wastewater and Good. duck hunting, a um, little bit of grout, just a bunch. But you know. Like young, they get at it a little bit. Yeah. I, that's that's why I haven't get pulled over in five years because I don't hardly yeah, hunt. You're not out there. <laughs> not out there. <laughs> Trent, what were we talking about with like duck transportation? Like I'm, I'm totally like, what would you ask them about transporting ducks and tagging and dressing? Du- like, do you have to? Can you leave them whole? Can you? Well, like, I mean, obviously, I I don't ever go out of state or I haven't gone out of state duck hunting, so it's always at home. So I'm not dressing them like at a hotel or whatever. Like right. I do pheasants and stuff, transporting yeah. back here. But no, I guess I mean the thing you know, you got to keep your ducks separate. But it's like you know, even, we were talking even by hunter though. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But we were talking like you know, you and your buddy get in the truck and you just toss them all in the back of the truck and then you get in the truck together. Right. It's like. You know, they're not, who's who's? yeah, they're not exact. I mean, there might be a pile in a pile, but they're not like zip tied, like, right. you know, separate. But then we were like, you know, that stuff is overlooked a little bit. If, if you're doing everything right, it's like, they're never going to stop a truck for no reason. And think that you have ducks in the back. Like that stuff oh. that like gets, <laughs> oh yeah. well, that stuff that gets, <laughs> that gets looked at further and further and deeper and deeper, you know, the farther you get yourself into trouble. Yeah. You'd need yeah. them tagged if you were transporting all of them. All of them. And with, your with body, your body wasn't in the truck. Correct. Okay, yeah. but if you just had a pile, but it was legitimately able to be split four and four, or six, yeah. and, mm-hmm. then that's not a... Yeah, if he's in the truck with you. If he's yeah. in the truck with you. So what do they have to do if his buddy's got to scoot and get to a wedding and Trent's got to break down to camp and to blind? What's, what's the legal thing you have to do for transport and waterfall? I mean, in my mind, I, as long as that whatever officer comes in contact with you, as long as they're doing their due diligence and you did your due diligence as far as to say, okay, I knew this was going to happen. Of course, mm-hmm. it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're going to get checked when you, right. you don't want yeah, it to happen, yeah, right? Yeah. right? You can say, okay, I have this person's number. These are his ducks. 
these are they're completely separated but um i mean it's obviously discretion of the officer right you know you can say okay i know you were hunting with mm -hmm. this person i can prove it because we can talk to him mm -hmm. or, or whatever you know mm -hmm. um and I mean, there just needs to be a little bit further of an investigation. I don't know any officer that would walk up to some, like a one hunter with, you know, 12 docs and say, okay, yep, you're good to go. See ya. Right. Yeah. right like there, right. there would be a little questions, bit more. Questions, yeah. for sure. So yeah. what's like, if you wanted to be super cautious, let's say you got a ticket one time for something, a, a plug violation, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be that person that ever gets, yeah. I always said if I ever, back in the day when I, when it was legal to have a beer in a car, I always said if I ever got caught, I'd only get caught once, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so if I had a plug violation one year and then I'm hunting with Trent and Trent's got to go, like, should I, is there more steps I should take to make it easier for you guys? Like, should I, should something be written down? Should I have a picture of his, like, how those, do I prove that he was with me? Those, uh, you got to tag the birds. I mean, to me, So where for do you me, get the tags from? I mean, to... You literally That's make something. Yeah, because I've yeah. never seen tags. Got you tags. just like make it like a zip tie with name, like zip tie of something on it with his name. So you can or make like a homemade a, thing. Yeah. There, there's nothing the state provides then, right? No. Okay. To me, right. if yeah. you put them all in a bag and then like write that person's stuff on that bag that's fine by me. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you don't have something to tag each bird individually. Right. Keep because, them separated. Yeah. I mean that's the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. Keep them separated and then if we have some contact info which obviously we're going to Ask for, yeah. would you, t I mean, I don't mean this, like, you don't know the person, because you, you see some people, like, all the time, right? right. Like, yeah. hey, Bob, hi, Anna, hi, 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 you know, <laughs> but then there's new people that never seen you, and you've never seen them. I, um, so you don't know these people whatsoever. The, the cleaner they make it, the better it's, like, are, oh, are you yeah. still going to call up that other person if he says it was Ron's Ducks? Probably. Probably, yeah. 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 I would say more, more chance than not. I mean, it's it just it would give us a peace of mind and it's not like it couldn't be their there might it might not be their first rodeo you know they may right. have been checked a few times and they just have it figured out to where it's like okay all you got to do is tell the co that these are my buddy's ducks and they're gonna let me go yeah. right so it's and and honestly it's the smooth talkers that you got to be worried about yeah so if, oh, really? if they're completely comfortable with you <laughs> that's that's Probably not a good sign. You yeah. want them a little on edge. You're yeah. a little on edge, exactly. <laughs> you so, want a little nervousness. Yeah. Honestly, you want them to pull out their, yeah. their, their social security card. card. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever they got. Yeah, but um, it's in there. I know it no, is. No, and, and, and that, that just shows that they're human, right? Like yeah. They're just nervous. Yeah. And, and if you don't have a reason to be nervous, um, I mean, granted, yes. If you don't have anything to hide, then the check There's is going to be... That outlier that's like right. that but yeah i i found that it's the it's the people that are more comfortable with you that um try to be buddy buddy with you like mm -hmm. oh yeah you know me right you know yeah. you just checked me the other day aren't you friends with uh yeah exactly yeah. oh i know the ceo up in macosta county or whatever and yeah. so i know somebody in chicago exactly yeah. it's like good for you dude i don't care <laughs> like i'm still gonna check you uh -huh. so i i in just my experience like that's kind of red flag for me yeah. We really love it when they throw each other, like our names out like, "Hey, talking to me." And being like, "Don't yeah. you don't you know Jackie, like the other CEO?" I'm uh, like, "Oh, tell me more about Jackie. Like, what do you know about her?" As it says it on your shoulder. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. in my chess club. Yeah. yeah. I don't think she plays chess. So, that's that's always a funny one when we run into that and it's like, "Oh, there's a there's a flag that they're trying to schmooze us a little bit." Throughout the year, I mean, you have to get X percent of these do you sometimes know when you pull somebody over, like, you're going to find something? Or is that always a surprise? Oh, no. I mean, sometimes you just know. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, yeah. I would I say. I mean, is it because the muffler's hanging on the ground? <laughs> we, don't we do not profile. We do not profile. We do profile. not profile. <laughs> but I will say, you know, when you see a truck Some of the nicest down, hunters could have mm -hmm. a 92 Chevy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I mean, just like, like you see, uh, like this past deer season, I was pulled into an orchard and I was honestly eating my dinner. <laughs> like, I just wanted to eat my dinner just, in peace. You're looking for a parking spot. And yeah, and it was like eight o'clock at night. And uh, I see like, and we're working shiners. It was in the middle of November. Yeah. So um, I see, I look up briefly and I see um, a light bouncing on the field. And I'm like, there's no way that someone is shining right now. Like right in front of me. And I'm trying to eat my dinner. And I'm trying to eat my salad. Like just let me eat. And uh, and I'm like, you know, I think he's shining. So he goes past me and sure he's 
yeah, shining everything that he can get his get Spot. his light on. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I throw all my salad like on my dash, and I black out all my stuff, and I I tail him for like maybe three minutes. So you don't think he saw you when he went by? Then? No way. Okay. I was backed in pretty far. Okay. And I, uh, so I, you know, I stop him and. Um, I mean, those ones, you know, you're going to find something like there's going to be something good in there and loaded firearm, caught crossbow. I mean, spotlight, oh. everything. So it was like, you, you don't know, <laughs> like, yes, to answer your question. Yes. Sometimes you just know when you're you going to find know. something. Yeah. So that's like, have you ever, uh, now I used to spotlight, but it's legal before, right? The 15th back in the, or is that back in the day only? Uh, all of November is closed. Oh, all of November. No- yeah, that's why I say like yeah. at eight o'clock. Like there's a season yeah. for it. Yeah, that's what I thought, but it, I thought it was up till. You can do it on your private property as long as oh. you don't have like any loaded firearms. I was on in your possession. Road. But oh, that was yeah. thirty years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's good. <laughs> Could have got a ticket probably. Yeah. <laughs> but I had no gun or anything. Do you do you spotlight out in October or anything? No, I don't. You don't even deer hunt anymore, deer do you? Hunt, no. We're just we're just. We're just trying to get federal tickets here. Yeah. <laughs> tickets sorted out. Is there another layer of, um, is there federal officers in this area too? Or mm-hmm. is it, or do you guys are the officers? Yeah, no, we, we do, we have, but they're um, a little bit more few. Yeah, there's not I'm, many. I think I have, there's, so we have forest officers and then we have like the fish and, and wildlife. US fish and wildlife officers that okay. will help us out um, or we'll help them out or however it works. And, um, typically I run more into, I work more with the forest officers just because, uh, the Huron Manistee National Forest, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, mm-hmm. we're in there and they're in there. So, but I know that they're kind of, um, they're, they don't have that, that many officers on this side of the state. So, yeah. um, but I've, I've dealt with more of the fish and wildlife, like the actual game wardens. Of Do the, they just stick to... The forest, then the national forest. The forest service does, mm-hmm. yeah. But the fish and games, they more handle the refuge and then federal violations. Oh, okay. So, like, I dealt with one that was involving an eagle that was possibly just. Mm. Not... I had an eagle question on my trivia game. Oh, oh. Super. let's. We'll throw super. that one out. What year was the bald eagle delisted? Oh my gosh! Ron. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Boy, um, I thought, I'm going to say they, relatively I thought, recently. I thought they yeah. sent you guys to so, school for, never mind. No, okay. We don't, if I had to guess, okay, so it's 2024. <laughs> I'm going to say that it was de- taken, and then you're talking about the endangered species list, right? Yeah. It, in 1967, the endangered species list was created. Okay, so it's not before that. Oh, no, good, no. I've got okay. it. Okay, so I'm going to say it was taken off the list in 1995. I'm going to say in 2003. Any idea? Uh, it's somewhere in there. <laughs> no, no. Are, we, are we back in high school? I'm getting jammed up on a test question. I'm just going to go middle of the road, 99. Oh, nope, 2007. Jackie oh. wins. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I knew it wasn't that long. It wasn't crazy long ago. No. Now but it still doesn't mean. You. So yeah. what was this thing with the eagle thing? Uh, well, someone was just pulling feathers, and you're not allowed to do that. So what do you mean pulling them? They were pulling feathers for like fly fishing ties. But it was it was it a dead eagle that they found or something? It mm-hmm. was, but that's still not yeah le- right. It's yeah, still you can't not legal. have talons, feathers, yeah. nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can't, any part of it. Nothing. No, unless you're uh, so. And typically, it goes to the, goes to the tribe. So yeah. like we have a lot of tribal um, treaty property in Michigan. So um, we work with them, and it'll they have certain rights as far as the eagles are concerned. But so, yeah. Not as far as take, but as far as usage yeah. of parts. Usage, right. absolutely. Yeah, they no, still can't. They can't gosh, shoot yeah. one out of the sky. Can't, yeah, can't no, that's not and they can't. They can't just take it when they find a dead one. It has to go through a whole process, process to mm-hmm. get it, and whatever tribe is in line to get the next eagle. Yeah. What so, about regular bird of prey? It's like I'm saying, regular red tails and what have you. Is that what is? How does that work? Uh, so I mean, they're they're still federally protected. So yeah. and can't same, have any, you basically can't have any same parts of that. Yeah, 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 exactly. It so. just would happen to be a bird that's not on the endangered species list or delisted, right. but it's still right. a bird of prey. Yeah. yeah, like we'll get random complaints here and there. That's like, hey, I have this this mount of this great horned owl yeah. that yeah. came up at a estate sale. That's you know looks like it's falling fifty apart years old. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're not supposed to have that. But oh, you really aren't though. Yeah. So I, I've gone and taken them. 
Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> giving them to like schools that have an educational permit to yeah. be able They're to They're not. Hold if you ever walk into somebody's house and they have a great horned owl on top of their yeah. mantle like, or like, like a snow owl, one. yeah, like especially a snow, snow. owl. <laughs> um, they only yeah. come down once in a while. Probably yeah. shouldn't be out there. Yeah. Like okay. they shouldn't have that. <laughs> yeah. How about wheels off of an old pickup truck? You think? Any... <laughs> that was a real, real old pickup truck. <laughs> did I tell you that that mount was done, or did I send yeah. you a picture? Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we better leave that story off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's part of a text reply of a Upland game bird. That's all it is. I was going to yeah. say, my wife Heather fo- follows a taxidermist on Instagram. Yeah. And one of them was uh, stuffing uh, like a, an owl. I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. what one it was, but she like showed like the paperwork and all the crap that yeah. she had to have. And then it was going to like a university or a oh, museum yeah. or something so like that. So what they got was an educational permit. Yep. Really. Yeah. She was state. like super excited to have that and have the opportunity to, to mount that bird and oh, give yeah. it to yeah. somebody who's going to use it for learning. I yeah. was driving, when I was, probably from the time I was 13 to out of high school, me and a good friend of mine, we did a lot of taxidermy. We would climb up in billboards and get pigeons for practice. We trapped pheasants in the cemetery. Oh my gosh, that's how it starts, Ron. Com- <laughs> <laughs> I've cleaned up my ways since then. Yeah. <laughs> did you know you can catch pheasants in a long spring trap by gluing? <laughs> with Elmer's glue, you glue the corn to the plate, and then the Elmer's dry, dries clear, and you put some corn on the ground. I shouldn't be telling you, <laughs> but it was 55 years ago. <laughs> and. We would catch pheasants out in that cemetery. It was a huge cemetery. It had a big prairie on it. Mm-hmm. And there were still wild pheasants in Illinois there. Oh, that's so cool. And every once in a while, we'd catch, catch a hen or a rooster, and, uh, and we'd take it back and attempt to do taxidermy on it. <laughs> so when I got my first job, I was traveling to California to do some welding. Mm-hmm. It was really weird. This product that I installed a lot of, California had earthquake code, and there wasn't a complete weld on it. You know what a rack beam is. So there wasn't a complete weld around the end plate. In right. California, they had to be completely welded. If it's not seismic, they just needed to be spot welded. And my boss got this job through this manufacturer that we did work for, loaded up my van, a welder, and my buddy Jimmy, and we drove out to California to do welding for like almost a week straight, like set up a production table, he'd grind it and paint it, and we just just had to do like two That's stacks cool. of beams. And on the way there, going through, I want to say it was – Past it was either Utah or Nevada. I kept seeing all these birds of prey dead on the road, and so this was seventy seven, probably seventy six. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know. It, that's not predating the, the endangered species <laughs> like, yet. I'm good. But <laughs> but literally, and where I want to go is how many people do you end up having to give a ticket to that they're like, I had no idea because this is my I had no idea story. Yeah, <clears throat> I was. I think I had an owl. I, I don't know if it was a golden eagle or an immature bald eagle. And I had some other big hawk. And they were all in my van. I, I would pull over on the side <laughs> of the highway and put them in my van. Pablo Escobar. And all I could think about <laughs> when we got there at night, I was going to skin them out and salt them. And I'd done it a hundred times. I was picturing you driving down the expressway and there's feathers rolling oh. out your windows or something. <laughs> no. like. And I got to this gas station. And I forget why, but... I was filling up the gas pump and I probably went in the back to get to the cooler or something, whatever we had. And the guy was, he goes, what do you got in there? And I said, oh, it's unbelievable. I, you know, and I'm telling him like <laughs> an excited kid, right? I do. I, I mess with taxidermy back in Illinois and I man, I keep all the way out here. I was like, I'm going to pick these up. He goes, you better find a garbage can right now <laughs> and get them out of your truck. And yeah. he wasn't a cop or anything. He was just like <laughs> yeah. someone old enough to know better. Yeah. <laughs> like I could have been like the collector. I could have got a... Yeah. Of, so how many times do you get to somebody and you really know, you almost want to just say like, dumbass. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like what's an example? Like, Every day. <laughs> <laughs> For, for birds of prey, I've never had to take any from anyone, but I think... But I mean anything, just like the guy like, oh, I didn't know you needed oh, a, a yeah. plug in the gun. I didn't mm-hmm. know I had to have orange. Like, It's quite frequently. Is it really? Yeah. yeah, I'd say honestly a lot of like, and I think I mentioned this in the first uh, podcast, mm-hmm. um, but so much of what we do is education. Mm-hmm. Like people don't realize like, like, yeah, we write a lot of tickets, but um, we also 
we a lot of that is like okay let's look it up in the guide together this is where it says that you can't do this and like you can you can really tell when people have just no idea like they had no clue yeah <laughs> they're not so, the schmoozy no. cocky yeah website. they're not the schmoo- schmoozers at all and and they yeah they really had no clue so i love going up to people and i'm like hey what do you like fishermen hey what do you caught oh i got these nice bass right here like look at these Out of you're season. like oh <laughs> it's not seasoned and those are undersized Dude. they're like what <laughs> Like, but I thought I could keep them. And you're, they're like, oh, so proud that they caught them. So that's something. That doesn't like seem fair. <laughs> I, I don't know what these people are doing, but it's like, if I go do anything, I'm looking at every regulation there is. And I don't know. It's just, yeah. Man, I don't want to get and I mean, they're available that. to everybody. Yeah. Too, yeah. So it's Easy. not. The to... app now, the Michigan DNR yeah. app is yeah. phenomenal. I promote that app all the time. Oh, I do too. Oh my gosh. My coworker like, Jackie get is like the spokesperson me. for it like any so contact. Nice. She should app. get <laughs> hey, residuals. Yeah. Oh it God. seriously is the nicest thing ever. Yeah. Because it's all the, all the um, booklets are downloaded. Yeah. You know, I used to take screenshots of it all because like if you're out in the grouse woods or in the marsh or whatever, you don't have service. I couldn't look it up to like, double check you know mm-hmm. be like what time is shooting light or whatever well now it's downloaded on your phone and it's it's always oh, yeah. there it's yeah. so nice yeah. the state did a really there's good like job maps like there's fish maps on there yeah. there's other types of maps you can buy your license and it or yeah it organizes your licenses for you so you yeah. can just mm-hmm. zip through them and look oh and see yeah what you got. and if i mean someone is like if they ever say like hey you know i don't have my license on me but i got my app pulled up and you That's can fine. see yeah. all your licenses yeah. on there i can yeah. see purchase dates i can see everything yeah. that is golden so yeah. are there some licenses where you have to have the actual physical one mm-hmm. versus the, one, the ones you have to validate so your deer a kill tag. Be, yeah so your your deer your uh bear. turkey bear um fisher martin um Bobcat. otter Bobcat. Yeah. so that would be trapping then fisher yeah. martin can you shoot no or you have to trap i don't know fisher, fisher martin. See, there's a perfect <laughs> don't shoot him, right? Right? Please. i'm like well, i know but i'm saying like well if they can trap it why can't I shoot it? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, it I'm being logic, honest, you know. Yeah. I mean, from a kid who trapped in a cemetery for his childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fisher, Fisher Martin, you have to, you have to trap. You can't shoot. Right. Um, bobcat, I think bobcat, coyote, fox are pretty much the main predators mm-hmm. or fur bears. I mean, you can shoot possum, raccoon, yeah, stuff like that. But you can't do any of the water species like mink, muskrat, beaver. Nothing. Uh, Nothing you can't like shoot that. that. No. Mm-hmm. Doesn't seem quite fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> got, one your, got one in your chicken coop. I mean, you're around, you're around uh, water primarily. They're my around. biggest problem with my chickens is my neighbor's walker hound came in and killed them all. So oh, I no. guess oh, no. <laughs> can't shoot or trap. Yeah. <laughs> I can't shoot someone's dog, can I? Yeah, no. oh, he's he's a very nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, he knows Carl. Oh all, yeah. You know the uh, the Giddings. You know Frank Giddings. Have you ever run into him? I've run into Giddings before. Giddings yeah. is very familiar to me. Yeah. <clears throat> he's like the most Giddings. well-known Walker Hound breeder back in the day. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's in his. I think he's like 80 years That's old. That's a now. big family, though. Giddings. Yeah, is it a is a big family, and yeah, Chuck lives next door. Um, yeah, his Walker Hound went through its. <laughs> have you ever met a hounds person that didn't keep their dog in a kennel or on a chain? No. Right. No, That's I, how hound yeah. guys are. Yeah. He put an electric collar on the dog uh-uh. in, a, in a geofence. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> it didn't work. My no. wife came out there to chicken feathers. <laughs> <laughs> a massacre. <laughs> He's probably so, so happy he, with himself. Oh, no, he not. had to pay for my new, f- and he come over here with his, he was just like, oh, right. I'm so, I said, look, it's just chickens. I'm, we're not emotionally attached, <laughs> yeah. but you have to either build a kennel or show me a you know, because I want to keep chickens. Yeah. yeah. And I said, I do have an option. If you'll pay for the fencing, I'll put up a heavy duty four foot steel fence, you know. And he said, Absolutely, absolutely, I'll pay for it. And I just did the labor on it. So, oh, well, that was what, nice. What, of you. Too bad. A lot of yeah. people won't be that nice. Do yeah. you get a lot of people? Compl- I mean, is that a common thing? Like somebody's dog in somebody's yard kind of thing? Or we is that just annoying? Dogs chasing deer. Like, as yeah, people typically, hunting. as long as it's affiliated with wildlife in some way. Um, we'll get that complaint, but mm-hmm. um, and we don't get a lot of houndsman complaints mm-hmm. really down here. Like we don't have a lot of people run in. I mean, I'll get we'll get coon hunters at night. Um, yeah, we have our we'll regulars check, that we check. Yeah, we'll check the same <laughs> same groups. You, you know yeah. them at yeah. one yeah. o'clock in the morning. Like yeah. that's like, who oh, it is. That's one of the hi Bob, hi yeah. hi Anna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are they exactly. ever doing anything wrong, or is it just people complaining that their hounds are going through their property, or that so they don't like the dogs and that. people? For me, the complaints that I've gotten is just people's random dogs. It's not even hound dogs mm. that are mm. going through people's property as they're 
And it's hunting. usually probably deer season, right? Yes. When they see a dog run through their yes. property. Well, yeah. And I, so while I was training, like I said, we don't really get a lot of people running dogs up here or down here, but um, I was training up in like Alcona and um, uh, I think it was actually in Al Alcona. Um, but there was somebody running their dogs up there and we had a property owner that was complaining. I mean, it was the same people, same line that they always run mm -hmm. and their dogs always trespass. So, I mean, at that point it's like, you know, you do what you can, but. So I, I have done a lot of hound, hounding with, you know, family. Back in the day. Yeah, back, you know, <clears throat> fair hounding and stuff like that. But I don't, I'm not caught up on everything. Mm -hmm. And I know, I thought that your hounds were able to go through private property but you can't, like, if they get treed up on private property, you have to go get permission, obviously, to go get them. Absolutely. But your dogs can run through it. So, right that, I mean, you can't just let your dogs run through other people's private property, especially if you've been told not to. So you have to make a reasonable effort to keep them off. But obviously, dogs are going to you start on go. public. Yeah, how do you control? Exactly. Yeah. Just, just do your, I mean, it's, it's really just doing your best there. But if it's the same reoccurring problem, mm -hmm. I mean, like, mm -hmm. that's, you may start wanna, that's probably yeah, when you, you guys get wanna, the call when yeah, it's a yeah, reoccurring. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but absolutely. If they treat, if they treat something, like, you can't have any get weapons. Permission. You can't have yep, any weapons yep, on you. you got to drop everything. You guys but, have probably seen that famous video that was in, oh, it was on the East Coast there. The houndsman that was in a big pissing match with the, with the owner or whatever, you know, he accidentally went treat into his property. He went and tried to get permission and he was just a giant asshole and then he started recording everything. Mm. Um, it was, it was huge in the hound world for a minute there. Yeah. Well, that video, yeah. It was, you know, he, the houndsman was trying to do the right thing. Like he went and tried to get permission, you know, like, can I go get my dogs? They're on your property. And mm -hmm. the guy <coughs> just, just hated hounds. Oh. And mm. just made it a huge issue. So, so you, I mean, just to clarify it, you really can't even go onto someone's property, no gun, no nothing, just to even go. It, like your dog's got a raccoon treat up a tree. Mm -hmm. You can't cross property line to, if you can't call your dogs off with a whistle. I mean, I think, it, I think in the rule book it says you can without a, but with this day and age, I'd highly recommend getting permission yeah. because yeah. you don't know what people are doing mm -hmm. on their private property. Well, that's property. where we give Onyx that plug again like we did yeah. last time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All you got to do is look up. It's, it's yeah. so easy now. I mean, literally, I mean, yeah. we have so many GIS systems that we can use and just say, hey, yeah, we're crossing property lines yeah. now. Like, right. let's start doing, it's, it's almost, and I would say now we don't get a lot of wreck trespassing issues trespa no. trespassing issues um because people have uh, because yeah. people are more mm -hmm. um versed in in the technology now mm -hmm. so um there's really no excuse yeah, for people really to be not. trespassing yeah. unless right. they're you know obviously doing it on purpose. purpose yeah so jerry and i went one time out on <clears throat> so he grew up his whole life here this guy died a few years ago older friend of mine and he had a jeep so then i wanted to get a jeep <laughs> Why does everybody That's think they need... That's how it works. We, I went through the same path. <laughs> you still got a Jeep down. All our friends. Yeah. Right. All your friends yeah, you get got one. I'll get one. Then you get one. I and need then, one. And then he's selling his when you're just buying yours. And oh, oh you got to get another one. Yeah. So and no so I, I got a Jeep and we went out. He grew up here, but he thought he remembered the Manistee National Forest pretty good. Oh, it and changes. We ended up, it does. <laughs> and we ended up in a lady's backyard in our two Jeeps. And we knew the, the two track that we were on... Like, there's no way we're going to back up. And literally, it was almost dark. And she literally says, can I help you guys? <laughs> and Jerry kind of went hat in hand. He goes, ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> he says, I wanted to show my friend these trails I ran 40, 50. And then she was a longtime resident. And they started yakking. And she said, oh, come on through. No big deal. <laughs> we're going around the house. <laughs> we're, watching, we're watching for the septic <laughs> field. Between your legs. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks a lot, Jerry. Why? I, I, things just aren't the same. <laughs> it's been 40 years since that guy ran. <laughs> Those trees wouldn't even look the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah turned funny. by the big oak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shoot, even just seasons, it feels like they change. Oh yeah, like they'll they'll switch around the forest roads. I mean, quite oh, do they? Routinely, yeah. Especially like uh, by me, the uh, snowmobile trails that are groomed. Yeah. You know, they mm. all got the gates on them. You, mm -hmm. They close them when it's not enough snow to run snowmobiles on, but they're keeping them groomed to get them in in shape. Mm -hmm. So, can you go with a side by side on a snowmobile snowmobile trail, or is that just for no, snowmobiles? No, on a designated snowmobile trail. Oh, okay. No. no, if they're designated snowmobile trails, that is what they're there for. That's it. And it's yep. seasonal then. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't it, open back up for motorcycles later on, or does it? No. Uh, it depends on where it is. So, like some counties. Yeah, because sometimes they do use like an RV enabled route. Yeah. So the ones I run into, or the ones I I see a lot, are like in the summer, fall, whatever. We can drive on them. Yeah. You know. But then in the winter, when it's snowing, 
they close them. Like when you're in that weird, you know, getting cold enough, getting a little bit of snow, yeah. and then, you know, they're trying to make a nice path before it's actually snowmobiling season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't go down and run. But they're all, all on up. public land though, right? right. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I would Sometimes. say for the most part too, like you'll, you'll have a forest road that will act as a snowmobile trail as well, or yeah. they'll, you know, they'll cross paths at some point. So um, they're kind of multi-purpose. If you will. Our I, snowmobile trails. Are I can edit this out if we need to. Does Muskegon County have a deer decoy? <laughs> <laughs> so back from, the back, back from the commercial break, I'll tell you a story about my first deer hunting trip in Michigan. <laughs> I was going up by uh, Garfield Road up, up 120, yeah. up toward Hesperia, and the guy who was building my house invited me to, he had a little camper, he pulled behind camper, and we went up for rifle season. And we're coming in on Garfield Road, and we see, like, all these brake lights. And uh, then you see, the, like, the first one. It's like, it was like they were going through a toll booth. You know, like, <laughs> once, they, once they look through a scope of binoculars, they... Yeah. Like, and I pulled up, and I said, what are you doing? He, goes, he says, oh, the DNR, they always put this decoy out there. <laughs> And the I looked spot. at it, and I'm telling you what, I, I would have lost my, I would have probably thought, being a new resident of Michigan, I would have probably thought, dear. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I thought it would have been a good question. <laughs> Those but are I, I, I started watching Montana Game Wardens when I knew you guys were coming over, so they do that a lot in Montana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the TV show, like, yeah, the yeah. Maine and stuff like that. Maine guides yeah. and Montana. We have our own TV show. You do? Yeah, it's called Wardens. Yeah. You can get it on the Outdoor Channel and for Michigan. Just, yeah, they just opened it for somewhere like somewhere else. You can view it. Oh no, have you Is guys been on it yet? States on the same. Uh, you will never no. show that, Ron. It's just <laughs> so it's just the Michigan DNR, but oh. um, it, I it say features far away like from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it features CEOs, but then I'm also the this, DNR. I feel great. Yeah, yeah super. <laughs> Um, you can get my voice. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what? These are just kind of softball questions. What's the most common? Is it trespassing, hunting violet, what, or fishing? What? Who makes the most mistakes? For me this year, it was baiting. I got the most baiting complaints. Oh my gosh, I felt it was so funny at one point. Like Jackie, I don't know if I just was off on the right days or something, but, but. <laughs> like Jackie got every for at least the first half of deer season, she got every single baiting complaint in Muskegon County. Crazy. And I legitimately like didn't get laughed out loud at one point because I just was like, oh sweet, you know, got another like. Hot complaint here. And here I'm like and, drowning uh, and baiting. Yeah. And Jackie's like, oh, on another baiting complaint. Like, <laughs> So how do you so. get a baiting complaint? Is somebody calling in a neighbor or is somebody running into it on public land or something? Both. Oh, okay. Both types of situations Yeah, happen. I would say it could be anything. See, I don't it could be someone trespassing. <laughs> hey, I saw this on the, someone's property. How about trail cam pictures? Is that something you guys, do people have that and say, hey, Oh, like you know, catching trespassers yeah, on their yeah. property? Absolutely. Because yeah, absolutely. I'm getting one for the pipeline out here. Yeah. I do it, called yeah. the pipeline company. They're going to get me some better signage. It says high pressure. All they've ever had is, is a gas gate. pipeline? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so this year we've had, a, uh, last year it was a snowmobile in our yard. Because they got lost, like you They did. get lost. <laughs> yeah, thank <laughs> you. I'm, just, I'm, just, yeah, I'm, yeah, very, I'm very sympathetic. My <laughs> wife is not. <laughs> She sees lights in the backyard, and then this year, it was just probably, it was right before I went out with you, it was when it was mild, right around Christmas, mm -hmm. and a, one of those big side-by-sides that almost look like a Volkswagen. Yeah, they're it, huge now. I mean, they're like the size of a car. Yeah. And it come right up the trail, stopped right at our the pond, and they're just sitting there. Well, they're probably like, oh, crap, how yeah. do we get out of here? Yeah. So instead of doing a three-point turn, which I would have done... They just rolled right through the backyard, right out my hole in the gate, oh. right out my driveway. Oh. Sue's yelling at me. I think I just came out of the sauna and I was just changing. I jumped in my pickup truck, you know, just with a pair of pants and T-shirt on and slippers on. And I went out and I saw where the wheel marks turned out onto the Katy Road. I saw where the wheel marks turned out onto the uh, Michelinda Road. Yeah. And I saw where they turned up the railroad tracks. And I'm like, <clears throat> effing bars right up there. <laughs> and I went, I was like, I was like you pulling up on my son-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled into the effing bar and sure enough, there's this four wheel, four door. Yeah. And I start taking pictures of the ORV stickers on the roll cage. 
And I'm like, I'm going in there. And I said, no, I better take a picture and send it to my wife. Didn't think of, like, checking the muffler for being ice cold or anything like that. Oh, no. I almost got myself into a pickle because <laughs> I took a picture, sent it to Sue, and she goes, that's not it. And I'm like, oh, boy, I was, like, two steps away from <laughs> Who's driving the side by side? With your slippers and oh, toes. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah. I was that guy for a minute. But that's like, I get that all the time here. And everybody says, I would love to be the cop. I would love to have, can I get, be part-time deputy? Or yeah, part-time. Can, you, can you deputize me for the <laughs> season? Temporarily you still have three more, 300 more hours, yeah, I Yeah, you got to get with our Wait, But I mean, just like a part-time, like for a parade, like you hire, more hours like, then. like the mounted guys. You're not really <laughs> cops, you know? You can, but, you can go ask the mounted unit well, that's in the good. county. There you go. But, yeah, they're going to get me some more signage. And they, they told me I can actually put gates across the pipeline. And they'll show me where I can put the fence post. Oh, as because long as they have, like, yeah. key? So, yeah. Yeah. And I could literally gate. So the, the road would be gated off. I could gate off my property line. And 700 feet down that way, I could do it yeah. again. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to get some trail. I'm going to catch one of these kids. I'm just, it's going to be my, <laughs> you guys are going to get a call from me at I was midnight. Gonna say, we're going to say, okay, well, be there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is not worth waking me up. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> right Jack, Jackie texts Anna. She goes, did Ron text you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flip a coin to go see who sees him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. How about rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. <laughs> But we we do have access to face recognition. We just don't know how good of capability how that good is. it is. Yeah. So, but I'm gonna try it. But out. baiting, you said to go back to baiting. Yeah. I don't really know. I don't deer hunt, so I don't know. I know when I got here, you could put carrots and apples out. How long ago did that kibosh? I don't know. Five years. Or well, probably for like the whole state. I think. It, yeah. Well, well, for the whole Lower Peninsula, I think it was. It was before we. Came it was on. before we came on. Yeah, I know that because where so we it's started, been it was no like baiting no since baiting. you guys yeah. have been on. Yeah. So yeah. what is that? Not who, but what's that like for a ticket if you can catch the person? What well, is it? It depends on the county. So like oh, if okay. we so if we find somebody hunting over it, which is obviously our we that's what we're gonna try to do. Um. So we'll walk in as they're hunting, and then if let's say in Muskegon County, Muskegon County, like if you write a ticket in Muskegon County, you're going to get a hefty fine. Like it's just, Is it? they, we're, we're yeah. very blessed in that our county, because it's not even across the board for all counties with DNR law. Okay. Sometimes the prosecutor's office, if they don't understand how our stuff works, um, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's just a lack of understanding. So right. they, they'll take, you know, maybe a minimum fine or it'll just get dismissed or something. Right. So, um, but Muskegon County, we love our prosecutor's office and mm-hmm. they um, so their their team oh yeah, yeah. so yeah. if you if we they write tickets us. in muskegon yeah they'll call us and they'll say hey like how did this one work was, did, was he nice to you like like yeah no he was kind of kind of yeah. rude yeah. yeah okay well we're gonna hit him with this this and this and this you good with that absolutely yeah, yeah. so what does that look like a uh, loss of hunting privileges there's a usually a fine or for just straight baiting it's just a misdemeanor okay. so you got that misdemeanor on your record right and then um a fine there's no license revocation yeah, i think it's up baiting. to like 500 dollars for for bait i want to say yeah right? i think so so i think so it's like 50 to 500 yeah there's like the maximum is like 500 i want to say that um and then uh, but obviously not all of our misdemeanors are the same, but most of what we have in our, and for just DNR law in general, they're, they're mostly misdemeanors. I would say right. a very small <clears throat> fraction is civil. To get, to get a felony, it would be hard to get a felony. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? Though in Lake County, it seems like they find them all the time for some reason. But they're and probably felons already. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is that yeah. up around Baldwin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped in there for a drink once. I got yeah. out of there. Yeah. You, say, you learned real quick, didn't you? Yeah, I, just, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I will say, like, felon in possession of firearm, like, that's a big thing during deer season. Yeah. And I know people will still do it. I yeah. mean, oh, absolutely. You know, I think I told you guys about my pistol thing, right, at the airport. Yeah, you told me about it. I told you about it. I, I think tell. I told her. I. I the think 22. He, yeah, and then yeah, it was yeah. a big target 22 pistol, and I tried to go through the TSA with it, and uh, we all it, make that mistake. <laughs> yeah, just not what, <laughs> well, my mistake was just a magazine. Just so, a, and you I, had a magazine. So, yeah, I think Jackie mentioned. I didn't it. She say goes, who it was. She goes. I told them about what you did at TSA, and I'm like. <laughs> 
I'm like, you told him it was me? And she goes, no, 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 no. I just told him it was an officer. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, you might as well just tell him. I don't even think I said an officer. I just said a friend. Um, (laughs) Well, now it's cats out of the bag now. (laughs) I tried going through, and I, so I I typically always carry in my my gym bag. My gym bag has uh, a holster in it, like a built-in one. And I, I have three magazines, and I one must have fallen to the bottom of my bag, yeah. and I just didn't know. I, I, you know, I thought I grabbed out all my stuff, and I'm in Chicago too. Ooh. <laughs> so Sheesh, I get good. through, and my bag always gets checked, always. Not because I have bad stuff in there, but just because it's like, oh, geez, you know, what I forget now. And uh, this is the first time for another fire. six ounce liquid. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. typically it's something yeah. super, super stupid, like protein powder or like mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, but they were like, and they, they called somebody over, and I'm just I'm like annoyed because I'm like, right. just tell me what's in my bag. Like right. I know they're there's something there in there. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. like looking at me, like then looking at the screen, then looking at me. I'm like, all right, just tell me. And they're like, ma'am, is this yours? And they're looking at the screen. They're like, well, there's a there's a magazine in here, like full of like nine millimeter rounds. I'm like, yeah, it's mine. There's not, no gun in there. Right, so what right. am I going to do? Throw them at people? Like, right, yeah. <laughs> so I told them I was an officer. See, and yeah, they, my friend's coming through with the empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he should be in the other line. line. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it was fine. I guess typically they're not, they don't usually like let you through. Like, right. but I was able to show him my badge and stuff. Right. And he's like, well, um, like I was in a different state too. Wow. <laughs> so, just they may not go to jail situation. like some people, hey? Like, yeah, I did. I had to go to jail. Then. Yeah, I, you know, I learned that and I'm like, oh, dang, but maybe I got the easiest way out. It was the same feeling when I'm sitting there. It was the first time I had the, the walkthrough without taking your shoes off. You know, I felt like I'm, I'm in first class even though I'm yeah. riding coach. Yeah. And I'm leaning on the conveyor going, come on, where's my bag? You know, you're always waiting for your bag. Yeah. And finally, the guy turns the screen. He says, sir, is this your bag? I'm like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, it's not mine. <laughs> and I, th- I know. I told you. Oh. I was, and I thought, I better be really. Uh, I said, I-, I also got to tell you, it's loaded. Because oh. I knew. <laughs> but I knew it was. And I'm like, I don't know if that makes a difference, but I'm coming clean. Yeah. I mean, like, just, I'm not hiding Oh, nothing. my God. Can you imagine the people behind you? What oh, they were They thinking? had to divert all the sh- hoity-toities that yeah. were in the. the You're just the, looking at you the, like. The, the pre-check line, they had all going with steerage over there. Oh, you know? oh my gosh. <laughs> and when they walked me down there in the handcuffs, like everybody was glaring at me. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, they're probably not going to be late for their flight, but it was a slow line. Because yeah. on top of everybody having to go to one line, there's the, there's the what do you call it, the gaper's block, right? They're all like, what? what? What yeah, they, slowing what down. They doing over there? Oh, yeah. So they're not Rubber moving even when they're sure. done putting mm-hmm. their shoes on. They're mm-hmm. jamming up to you. Yeah, it was not. It was a bad day. But it's a misde- <laughs> it was a misdemeanor. Which was so going back to felonies. What could you get a felony for? Like oh, in oh. game violations, I I would doubt if there's one or I don't know. If, I mean, I uh, gross. Like there is some, but it's I don't. I'd honestly have, have to, to look. Yeah, it up. You'd have, have to be have like to a look. poaching I, ring or I, something. I was like yeah. That. I would really have to look it up. I I don't know. Yeah, I think it's 90, just not there, are, there are some that say felony on like our little cheat sheet that we carry around, but right. I couldn't tell you what they Never ran into it. Never ran into it. Mm-hmm. No, just felons in possession. Yep. And then you got to turn that over to another police department. If it's no, we'll handle it. We can handle it. Do you it. have? Yeah. yeah. Got to yeah. put them in cuffs in the whole nine yards and everything? Yeah. yeah. I had to be in cuffs in the back of that car for short ride from the airport to Kent County. <laughs> Typically, Very no. uncomfortable the way you guys put cuffs on, by the way. <laughs> I actually lifted good. Jackie's cuffs on the boat and she didn't know it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she kept telling her that all day. She's like, stop. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so baiting, what's what's besides like baiting, that, that seems to be like an annoying thing to have to go check on right when all your complaints are baiting it's very annoying and you don't have any other ones but and she gets all the other ones but sometimes they turn they, into good oh stuff. yeah so like if i foot chases like a legal yeah. deer <laughs> like, so i mean sometimes you'll just like like kind of how like we were talking about earlier if you know how to talk to somebody and you can have like a good conversation mm-hmm. with them um you'd be amazed what you can learn in a matter of seconds so, um, and obviously we always do our homework on somebody mm-hmm. before we contact them, you know, and we'll kind of get an idea of what, what we're kind of walking into. But 
you know, you wouldn't believe it. Like you go check somebody in their blind and you know, yeah, you know that there's a corn pile 50 yards over there, but they're telling you about all the deer they've killed this year and, mm -hmm. you know, everything. <laughs> oh, you shot him out of this blind? Yep, shot him right here. And you know that bait's been out there for two months. Yeah. And they're like, yep, and shot one last week. And they're actually hanging themselves like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you'd be amazed. Dummies. So, yeah, that's ridiculous. So it's, it's, it's just talking to people. And so, yeah, some of these complaints are annoying. But they, but they can be really good. But they can turn into something pretty cool. Yeah. Do, uh, I mean... I gotta, uh, let's just say there's a hundred hunters in Muskegon. We know there's a lot more hunters, but let's say there's a hundred. Do you think 10% of people are violating accidentally or on purpose, or is it really less than that? I feel like uh, poaching in general is more of an opportunity thing. It's the opportunity presents itself rather than they went out there with the mind to do it. There are some oh, people that do that, but okay. it's more op opportunity based. Gotcha. It's, it's kind of like they just couldn't help it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were on their way somewhere and they... Yeah. Yeah. And they saw yeah, they see same, that. They see that deer that they the motorized deer. Yeah, exactly. That's why I don't hunt deer. I bet you I would be that guy. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, antlers. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot of the time, you know, these guys will see these these deer on their trail cameras for, you know, two months. And they're just, they're waiting for, obviously, during legal hours, they're waiting right. for the, the opportunity there. But a lot of the time, those deer will become nocturnal oh, yeah, very quickly. Fast. So, mm -hmm. um, that's when they start looking for them at night. Yeah. And that's, I think, if, if the opportunity presents itself, it's very hard for somebody to kind of... Yeah, especially if you're that. talking like the minute after sunset mm -hmm, or sure. the minute before. Yeah. But then it's a lot different when you hear it. Like, when, do, would you typically go out on patrol in deer season a couple hours early? Just... Uh, we work all hours yeah. during deer season. I, I, my... I like working splits, so I'll like start in the morning. I'll work the morning hunters, and then I'll you know do my thing during the day or go to the gym. Go back for a out. Couple, yeah, and then I'll yeah. work overnight. So it gotcha. It's 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 it just depends on what the officer wants to do that day. What's you know what the activity's like and weather too. Yeah, weather. Yeah. I was just gonna say weather is huge. Yeah. Right. I mean, you got a big cold front coming in or something for ducks or. Mm -hmm. Even deer is yeah. the same thing. Yeah. 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 No one's complaining that the deer aren't moving. The deer aren't moving. Yeah. That's now why you know. I like uh, that overlapping season with duck hunting and deer hunting is so much fun to work because a crappy deer day yeah. is a great duck great day. Duck yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> so you always have something to do, mm -hmm. and there's there's zero excuses to find activity that Nothing, day. Yeah. So, whereas I have sat many of times on like early in the morning waiting for people to come to their blinds and they don't. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of like, like, disappointment. I'm, you yeah. got this one locked down, yeah. right? And, like I got it. Mm -hmm. And he had to work late last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just was a bad night. I could have gave him a ticket. I've been, I've been out here an hour and a half shivering in this. Now hole. you're mad at the guy you can't give yeah. a ticket to. Yeah. You don't even know who he is. Yeah. Yet. He might be the nicest guy too. Comes up, and finally makes contact with Jackie, and she's like, "You're getting everything." Yeah. <laughs> I had to so so I'm, I'm throwing the book yeah. at you. Yeah. Your come, shoes are ugly. Come, come by and. A random time and i run into him and i'm like why are you here right now like you shouldn't be hunting right now yeah <laughs> well one thing i was surprised at you told the one group of duck hunters like if you guys see a duck come in shoot it yeah and i'd be like that's the last thing like if even if i knew that was the rule the it'd be like the last thing i would do like you're over there talking to one hunter checking his license <laughs> yeah, and you <laughs> And at one point, there was some ducks to kid. They didn't get a shot at yeah. it, but there was a, a like a three or four pack coming. I'm like, I think they were asking me too many questions that they were, didn't fully. See I those. saw them coming. I was yeah. just sitting in the boat smoking a cigar. I was getting checked. <laughs> I was on the river, and officer pulled up, and I knew him. And you know, he's like, "Oh, hey, Trent, I was going, blah blah." I told him, you know, how morning was going. He's like, "Anybody else out here?" I'm like, "Yeah, there's some guys up, up river or whatever." He took off, went around the bend, kicked off a bunch of ducks, <laughs> boom, boom, <laughs> shot two ducks. <laughs> Right out of it, right from what he jumped. And then he went down, checked them. There was only one way back out. So he went mm -hmm. back by me. I waved him down and I'm like, hey, thanks for them ducks. He's like, I heard you shoot. You know, I, watched him, I, I watched him jump up and I, and I heard you shoot. I'm like, yeah, thanks, bud. <laughs> I've checked some field hunters and I've been like, I'm only checking one at a time going down the line. If something comes in, I'll lay down in this field and I have. Just, just can, get down, let yeah. them take a shot. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, geese will do that all of a sudden. Yeah. You can be cleaning up decoys and they come in. Why not yeah. while you're getting yeah. pulled your license But it's, it's all officer, officer comfort level with that. Or if right. you find a violation, then there's it's a whole different right. thing. Game but over. Yeah, we're going to stop. Now, there's got to be some COs that, like, I don't mean anti-hunting because your job is to regulate hunting and fishing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But I imagine in certain areas of the state or different states, it's almost got to be like, aren't you like a buddy? You know, do, did they expect you to be like at least on their side with hunting and fishing? And I will say I, I advocate for them as much as I can. That's like, what I'm getting we, at. We will. In, like you're happy they're out there. Yeah, 100%. And you're, yeah. So yeah. and like we're kind of having like this little bit of an issue with Muskegon County. You know, some of our Muskegon County land is is not fully accessible to hunting or, you know, they're, we're trying to work that out, right? So, trying to see like, okay, should we allow hunting on it? And I'm oh. trying to be that voice for Advocate. the right. hunters because, you know, there's there's people that want to hunt that property that don't own their own property. Mm-hmm. And, and it is public land. It yeah. is public land at the end of the day. So Would I'm, that be like school property and, and stuff like and that? And it's not a it's, park. It's, it's literally park. county. Yeah, it's so it's county owned. And that's county what owned. Onyx yeah. or GIS shows is that it's county just owned. Just say Mis- county of Muskegon. Yep. Yes. All it says. yep, Muskegon County. Yep, exactly. So it'll say that. And so I typically will say, okay, there's no safety concerns here. It's right. not a designated park. So if it was a designated park, then obviously no hunting. Right. But um, there's there's no reason why a, a, a deer hunter cannot come out here or and hunt this. Or a turkey hunter. Or yeah. a turkey yeah. hunter. Yeah. Or, or some, right. exactly. Or so a bear a small hunter. game hunter. <laughs> like, um, if they're following all the legal, like, laws, state laws, whatever, ordinances, all that stuff, if they're following everything, there's no reason why they shouldn't be right. able to. So at, at the end of the day, we, we try to be their voice because then right. sometimes well, cool. they can't. They don't have the but I imagine that can't be everywhere. You know, right. You're right. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. I, I mean, I grew up in Chicago, and, yeah, we had forest preserve districts. Of course, they were, you know, you couldn't hunt in them. But you know the people who patrol that, just they just couldn't be, like, pro-hunter fishermen. I mean, you would... Yeah, it well, just. I think most... I, I'm going to say all CEOs are for the hunters and will advocate for them as long as everything's happening correctly. So right. if something's going wrong, yeah. obviously, we got to... Be like you're in the wrong. Hunter, There's not like anybody from fishing, PETA whatever. that snuck into the. No, no, the, not that we're aware no. of. If they are, they're hiding pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> they're, and they're shutting their mouth. Yeah, they are. Are you guys hunters like, as well? Do you guys do any hunting? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, I shot. I shot my first bow kill this year. I had a crossbow. I know that's sometimes not a real bow, but I want it, so I'm like, I'm gonna use, gonna it. use it. Yeah. So that was fun. And I tip. I I deer hunt every every season, and um, I am dabbling in. No pun intended. So duck hunting and um, uh, mostly puddle ducks, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't tried field hunting yet, um, but no. I mean, we we try to be pretty well versed in everything. Right. So if 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 even if we you know don't stick with something, we'll always try it. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if given the opportunity yeah. to. And but, plus, if you do it with somebody, you know, like what yeah. the steps were. Oh, like, you absolutely. You had to go through it like this sucked. Ass. Yeah, like yeah. being yeah. a deer hunter is yeah. a, a lot more like, convenient than absolutely. not being a deer hunter. You know like, yeah, because yeah. I, I have a CDL and I drive a big truck, and I'm like, I think everybody should have to ride with a CDL driver like before they get their yeah. license to see what it takes to turn this absolutely. damn thing around this corner. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Oh and what gosh. it takes to stop. I'm like, everybody should have to like at least ride with a truck for an hour. Absolutely. <laughs> like it would literally change the way everybody drives around a big truck. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I think you're exactly right. Yeah, but that means. You're going to have like 800,000 ride alongs over the next <laughs> two years. No, I'm just no, saying, like, no. you're all going to want to smoke yeah. cigars out of your yeah. bowl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just like, you know, just goes over to them hunting, knowing like, yeah. Yeah, how it happened or yeah, you know, how a mistake could happen. Or... I think it's pretty difficult, um, not impossible. I think it's difficult to enforce the laws that you haven't experienced mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. yeah. So whether that's for waterfall hunting, duck hunting, small game hunting. Yeah, yeah that makes like sense. That. Yeah, and if like, you're standing there, you're like, well, this is a drake and this is a hen. Like, how can you not see that? But then yeah. you sit out in early light, and obviously the shooting light is there for a reason because mm-hmm. then you can, but you can tell sometimes it's it's hard to tell. You know, yeah, cloudy absolutely. Morning. Especially yeah. early teal season. Yeah. Like, yep. there's, you know. Wood if, duck if, or teal. Or, exactly. You know, Spearfishing. If, also. Yeah, that one's a difficult one. Yes. Can, you can't, because once you spear it, you, <laughs> it's over with. It's not late. You're done. I mean, that, you a certain uh, so, uh, friend of mine, <laughs> we were in Alaska, and uh, they changed the regulations on king salmon. Mm-hmm. And it was so big that we had to use the gaff. <laughs> we're three days early <laughs> oh, no. and there was nothing we could do besides let it go right just yeah. let it float away. i mean it could have been killed by hook and mouth or hook yeah. and gut too mm-hmm. but it was just like oh so is that a thing too with regulations changing is that a big thing or do they pretty much stay the same here we're no for we're, um things change a lot yes mm-hmm. for especially in the deer 
Y yes, like deer. I'm that. hoping that deer is kind of settling down yeah. a little bit as far as regulation changes. Um, but uh, I, for some reason, uh, we're getting a lot of changes with our fisheries. Fish. Oh, so, wow. Well, oh, that um, would mess me up too. Yeah, so we're getting yeah. a lot of steelhead regs that are going to probably get switched up here. Um, limiting April 1st, the limit. Or March 1st. April, yeah. March 15th. So there's going to be all the steelhead fishermen get on the river. Yeah. Take all that out. Yeah. <laughs> One of those Redact days. that. Soon. 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 <laughs> it's going it's to happen before it's not. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, that would be, because then I could see you get the guy like, it always starts on the 15th yeah. of what, and mm -hmm. then they change something. Why do they change all that stuff, basically? Is it biology driven? I would, I would say think? most of our dates are going to be the same. Like trout opener is always going to be yeah. the last Saturday in April. Okay. So it's like it's, that's. Um, more it, possession limits. It's more possession limits. So oh, okay. it's like our fisheries slowly change and evolve. Right. For example, our whitefish fisheries. Our whitefish, they are struggling in Michigan. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are really, really at a, a kind of a standstill of like, what do we do? Because they're not reproducing. I mean, we aren't biologists. So if right. any of this yeah. doesn't make sense to your listeners, then I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but they're just not reproducing like they they used to. So mm -hmm. a lot of the the whitefish that are coming in and we're taking data on, they're they're old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting any young fish in. So there's something hmm. wrong there. Yeah. Um so pretty So do they close it then based on that or See, that's the problem. Know. You know, we have to we have to make opportunity for our anglers and we also have to protect the resource, right? Yeah. If you're a true angler and you really like that fish and stuff, you should be okay with yeah, Changes. shutting restrictions it down. Yeah. On You'd be so surprised. That's, though, I, that's the hard part too, though. Yeah. Is like shutting it down is easy, but then opening it back up is like pulling yeah. tooth and nail. Like it just yeah. Once it once it closes to get it back is even harder. So I can I can understand you know some of it's that. It's like stuff, it's easier to keep the customer you have. I'd rather have the fish yeah. around or you know mm -hmm. the animal and stuff yeah. around versus just. Do you ever get stopped when you're in the spring woodcock banding? Have you ever uh, been stopped? I would imagine that be, you'd be called once in a while for that. When spring people are banding woodcock, you know, so they're out mm. and they're running with their dogs and they look like yeah, hunters. It's, it's technically the quiet season. It's, it's so, you, so you could be out in the, yeah. No, it's quiet season. Nobody can be running their dogs during that time period except for a licensed Oh, band. that's right. That's so if you beyond, are in the woods with a, an unleashed dog with a pointing hunting dog, that's illegal. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, if somebody knew what they were looking at, yeah. they could call on you, but... Do you like net them or something? No, the dogs point them. So a woodcock will lay four eggs, hopefully. That's the max. And then once they hatch, they stay relatively close for like a week. And then you have 14 days until the woodcock can fly. Oh. So you have 14 days. Your dog will go out and point. You have to have a very, 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 very steady dog. Not just the, steady, a dog that also doesn't want to kill it. Yeah. yeah. Because the mom She's... will do like broken wing stuff and oh, like yeah. chirp and stuff like that. So your dog has to stay through that you know, until you can get up to it and everything. Um, and then the chicks will just stay put and the mom will like run off. Oh. So you stand there for like 10, 15 like, minutes. It's like looking for mushrooms minutes. when yeah. you don't know how to look for oh, mushrooms. Oh, and they blend in so perfect, little tiny puff balls. And then once you get like four of them located, hopefully four, grab them, put them in like a little uh, like laundry sack, mesh mm -hmm. sack, and then pull them out. You got to measure their beaks. Um, that tells you how old they are. I think they're born yeah, with Yeah, their beaks grow by the day. Two, really? can, two millimeters a day. Holy cow! So yeah, Isn't that crazy. So you, can, you can you know how you know when they hatched, and you know how yeah, like you'll are. know if it's whatever millimeter, old. it's going to be that millimeter. Yeah, yeah. So you know they hatched. I found them the hours. day of, like still with like the little like white stuff on there. <laughs> Egg yolk. And like I don't. <laughs> and if I and if it's in an area like I know I have good access to, like I'll just leave them and come back in like four or five days because I don't like handling them little tiny. It's a day of the board. Oh, they're yeah. so tiny. I don't even oh. hold my grandkids yeah. until they can hold their head up. <laughs> I, I like the four, five, six to eight day old ones you know they're they're stout you know they you can handle them they got a little you muscle feel better about touching them yeah and then I, we'll put yeah. a band on it and, you know you got to fill out your paperwork and that all goes hmm. you've never run into any of that huh mm -mm. Okay. no i didn't know that was a thing to be honest well see we just added to your repertoire yeah mm -hmm. learn things every day i mean you're a, you're the trapping expert in muskegon yeah. county but you didn't know about oh, that oh yes yeah if I get a trapping question, it goes to Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, I don't, you know, I don't like, know. I got do a guy. Do I do, I do trap, okay, yes. So yeah, you know. that's that's my favorite thing. I'd rather trap than deer hunt nice. or anything else. Nice. She goes so. traps up in the UP, runs the UP to go trap and then come back. I wish yeah. I did. I wish I did more of that. But it's yes. a lot of time and a lot of effort. I mean, you sit that time in the, in well, the seat at the... Jackie, right. in, in our defense, <laughs> and in defense of other trappers, she gets a lot of opportunity. 
<laughs> she has people doing stuff. scouting for her. <laughs> That's good. That's smart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, resourceful. I mean, I gotta use my resources. Yeah. Right, exactly. I That's find a lot of stuff on my own. Yeah. I know. So, so in the last two and a half years, has there been any? I know you told a pretty funny story last time. We're gonna hit pause and then we're gonna do the trivia game. Um, but have, you told me a story about being out on uh, Nugent Sand and oh, yeah. the guys running and people. Have you had any? That you can I, share. And you I also think, had that goofy raccoon story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah, that was a giant. I forgot about that raccoon. <laughs> that still haunts me. Um, but I think last time we talked, um, I mean, we were still. So typically our stuff stays, stays in court for a while. Our big cases stay in court oh, for a while. Yeah. I mean, up to a year. I mean, really, it's it's that's possible. So I think my case that was in court for that when we talked that last time i couldn't talk about um, right that's done it's been done yeah um but that was a fun one because i had to go and like i was very new and right i didn't know all like like i guess interview tactics and stuff so i just was like kind of flying by the seat of my pants like, wow. like hopefully this works like yeah. maybe I didn't hear the story. what is it about a raccoon or what are you talking about oh the raccoon oh, is no, like well this oh. is a fishing violation so yeah okay the nugent sands was a fishing violation i just chased around some perch fishermen that um so I think it were, you. yeah they weren't <laughs> weren't gonna go very far and then the raccoon was actually if i remember right it was a search, search warrant, warrant and it was living yeah. out of this person's house right. and they were feeding it dog food and i kid you not yeah. like i had a big giant like tub and so we were taking this like a tote. Yeah, yeah, like a like tote. Rubber, rubber made tote. Like yeah. a big yeah. tote. It filled up every crevice <laughs> of that tote. And oh. I kid you not, this thing could not have been any less than 60 pounds. They had it, they literally had it obese. It was yeah. obese. It's like that should have been the ticket right there. Yeah, like that it was wild. the probably one of the happiest raccoons, but oh, oh I'm my sure. god, <laughs> that thing, it looked like those like memes that you see with just like the small, like the eyes. Right, and, like, two the, little claws mm-hmm. together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like it, legitimate. That raccoon I've, couldn't climb a tree, I guarantee oh you. Oh my no. god, it couldn't walk. <laughs> It's like that's negligence. So like, yeah. it, that, so that Animal was, abuse. that yeah. was the raccoon story. The one that I'm talking about right now, that was a, this is a deer story. And this um, was just a, a known poacher that I was very familiar with. And I just knew of his name. And I got a complaint that he had an untagged deer in his garage. And I'm like, okay, well, he's got a closed garage. Like, I can't, can't get, get in it. there. I can't see in there. You know, I can't. Um, so unless I get a search warrant. So I'm calling the prosecutor like, hey, do I have enough PC for a search warrant yet? And he's like, no, you need more. So I was like, crap. So I knew there was a witness. So I went and interviewed the witness, got him to admit that um, I helped him, that he helped him load up an antler deer in the back of his truck okay. on, on this whatever night it was. Right. And uh, so I'm like, okay, at least I got antler deer back of the truck. He witnessed it. But there's nothing to tell me they didn't throw a tag on it. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm like, you know what? I'll just go talk to him. Because I, I still don't have a search You could still there. knock on a door. I can mm-hmm. still go knock on a door. So I went and knocked on his door, and he answered the door. He's like, yep, what do you want? Like, he hates the DNR. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, they're like, you know, like this. You're violating, you're going to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course, like I, you know, like I said, flying by the seat of my pants. Like, hey, you know, you know, just... Uh, what was I saying? I think I had some some story or something. Just following up on a complaint. Heard you shot a deer, um, and uh, and he's like, "No, I didn't shoot anything." I'm like, "Okay, great. Where are your deer tags?" And so he shows me two two combo tags. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I knew he shot a deer, and I knew that it was somewhere, and it was antlered. So in the state of Michigan, you got to you you have to use your your two buck tags. You get two buck tags. Mm-hmm. So he shows me two buck tags. So I was like, okay, boom, take them. I call the prosecutor and I'm like, hey, do I have enough now to get a search warrant? Because <laughs> I have his two buck tags. I know he shot a buck. I'd be nervous confronting somebody. And um, <laughs> so especially this guy too. He was, oh. Yeah, he was interesting. So he's like, yep, you got enough. So I was like, sweet, wrote it all up. And uh, so as we're... So I, I guess let me back up a little bit. As I was pulling into his driveway, 
Um, or was this before that? I don't know. This was like a while ago. Mm -hmm. So um, he's got a wood bur burner. Mm -hmm. And we were smelling like hair, like mm, burning right. hair. You can tell, yeah. And I was smelling it, but I was at that point executing the search warrant inside the house. So we were in and out of the house looking for firearms, looking for any like, you know, blood, boots, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a prosecutor with me, which is not very common. And I just remember like walking back out to my truck and the prosecutor had opened the, the wood burner, which we had ac fully access to everything. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he's like, it's in the burner, it's in the burner. <laughs> oh no. He and threw I'm the like, deer no in the boiler, in the wood so boiler? So I grab the, my fire extinguisher and I'm booking it out to this wood burner and I'm like putting out this fire and I mean, sure as heck, put the whole freaking carcass really? in the wood burner as we were there. Like, well, not like as we were there, but like Probably he right. was in custody, but like not in custody, but yeah, like yeah. he was there. We were watching him, <laughs> but he, he had like his, somebody else or something, put it in there. And when you could just, tell it was recently oh, put in there. You already took his tags. I'm like, wouldn't it just be easier to just go put a tag on it? Right. Well, you'd think so. Right. So, um, and then we found, uh, I'm like looking around. I was like the antlers cause there was no head in there. Right. And, uh, and I knew this guy was like an antler hunter. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the antlers are around here somewhere. We just got to find them. And he's got a big old wood pile that's underneath like a lean to. And I see like this little tine, like mm. sticking out of the top of this like 20 foot wood pile. And I was like, no freaking way. So I climb this pile of wood and it's just not, it's just in a pile. It's not like organized right, so or anything. So it's loose. And it's yeah. So I'm like dodging all these and I'm like, I hold up this antler. I'm like, heck yeah. yeah. I'm like freaking got him. <laughs> that, that sounds funny. That should have been on Wharton's no television. No tag, no nothing. And, um... So yeah, that was a fun one. That went through court. Um, we ended up getting DNA testing on the um, on the antler set, the meat from the wow. bucket that we found in the garage, and matching it to the hide <laughs> um, in the burn barrel or in the burning uh, the burn thing. So we were able to say, okay, this is all the same deer, and because he tried telling me that no, I somebody hit a, a doe on, and that that was from the doe. And so, I needed wood. To and burn I it. needed, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to burn a deer. So I'm going to burn it. I was like, out of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Except for that wood pile with a giant wood, wood pile with the antler. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, but we were able to say, okay, there's not a, an antler, antlerless deer here. There's an antler deer here, and they are all from the same deer. So that argument was completely um, not valid. So we were able to actually get um, illegal possession on him. So he had to pay... Uh, I think five thousand dollars in restitution Ooh. to the state, and um, and he well, doesn't get any of it. And he had five he lose years. Everything. Right, yeah. he has five years of revocation, so wow. he's he's still revoked at this point. But those guys are still going to go out and poach, probably, aren't they? Even if they, you know, get, we'd like to think, think that yeah. we we get them and we kind of hammer them while we can, but it's. It's uh, this guy is like a history with the DNR. There was a guy and that like, worked for me that had a history. That he's dead now. Yeah, but. Uh, he he literally had a history with every cop and every co. Yeah. He he went. I think didn't I tell you this last? I don't think I told you it on the air, but he he was out on <laughs> off of. And he, I'm this there. Is a, I know exactly. This, what you're this about. is a field that he was very successful over the years, bopping across a very flat field, and he'd get out there. So the two guys that were in this truck both worked for me off and on. At this point, they weren't working for me this week. But yeah. um, one, one had a felony, so he couldn't be around a firearm, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't even be with somebody if yeah. you have a, a mm -hmm. felony. The other ones had so many DUIs. It's not your drive. Drive. <laughs> so this is how genius these guys were. Yeah, sounds like it. When they got, did get caught, and they did get caught, the, I, I, I keep wanting to use their names, and I'm not going to. The guy with the DUI said it was his rifle, and the guy with the rifle said he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do you come up with this stuff? Like, all right, if you get caught, yeah. it's your rifle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not supposed to be in th yeah. the vehicle with a rifle anyway, right? Yeah. And, but they cut across, and the fellow who owns this property now is a friend of mine, and they went across this field because he'd been across this field for years, mm -hmm. and he had just dug a pond. Oh, I remember you telling me that. Right, in into, the, into the pond they yeah. go. The next morning they're in there diving. Yeah. To get, and, to get guns and out. tools out of the truck. And they all, they got a lot. Oh, my God. Anyway, all right, that was my, that was my pursuit story. <laughs> Jackie, have you 
like T-boned your car on a sand dune again since we talked about yeah. That was in the last episode. Yeah. <laughs> she was chasing some more. She goes, Got high centered. High centered. <laughs> I have not. I haven't even gotten stuck, knock on wood. All right. Since then. Any, uh, any, uh, Special cases or anything that sticks out? Uh, I had a good waterfowl, baited waterfowl case that uh, involved some miners and stuff. Which so that miners. that went into my into the family court, which was interesting to Ooh. experience. And that wasn't even in Muskegon County; that was in another county that I did. So that was fun. But I almost we almost were able to. This is where the differences in counties come and prosecution. Yeah. And it was a great case. They shot over 120 times in an hour. Wow. And they only had like six birds. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. Anything. That is pathetic. To, probably to their betterment because they weren't over the limit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But they were hunting a baited pond. Oh, wow. And, uh, like people, shelled corn baited? Yeah. People didn't have licenses. Uh, there were some unplugged guns. But then the other county, they reduced the charges so much. I wish it would have oh, happened in Muskegon. That's ridiculous. But it was a great case and a great like learning case for it. Yeah, so. there's a lot of violations though. Yeah, Who they were they were also using the... they were also using uh, lead shot because oh. they, they ran out of their steel shot. <laughs> Look, were you sitting there counting shots or? Yeah, I had like we had it surrounded so that we could. I was sitting in the field so that I could count the shots, and then my backup <laughs> like was one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, need a clicker, bro. Yeah, <laughs> simultaneously okay. as she's sitting on this pond, too. Me and another officer were working another baited pond or possible baited pond, and it was a downpour that day, too. Like, mind you, this was like a great waterfowl day, mm. but it was raining. I'm and like bundled up in all my rain gear. So, <laughs> like, she had it so like. Oh, I just walk out to this pond. I'm just like sitting right here. And I'm, hiding like I got this, I'm hiding behind a yeah, barn. She's like, yeah, she's like, I got this little shed, you know, whatever. And I'm like freaking like freezing. <laughs> I take a wrong step in this marsh and I'm up to like my chest in water. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Never make it out to the pond. Never make it out there. And I'm like, so me and this other CO, we're just out, you know. Chilling, stuck, I don't soaking know. wet. Did you, did you hear any shots? We heard like I think there was a group right above us, but they weren't near the pond, um, and they were shooting. <laughs> Shot was raining down on us, and oh, you know we're just it was just the worst morning ever. And the Jackie's technician was like, "Oh, just took 120 shots," and I'm just like, "Oh, <laughs> well, Jackie's got one." Well, just fun. Really? Text like, back. Oop, just filled my waders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a great morning over here. <laughs> Yeah. So it was just so funny because I'm like, well, at least one of us scored. <laughs> something yeah. worked out. And... But there was like six guys there, and for only getting six, uh, only four, five of them had rifles or uh, shotguns. And we could have had a nice Super Eagle or whatever it is, Benelli. Uh, so do they lose do, their like, guns and all those things typically? Typically they do, yeah. but mm-hmm. since this court is very lenient and That's it was a minor crazy. that it involved, they gave it back. Mm-hmm. Which... That didn't teach anybody a lesson, though. No. Mm-hmm. No. And so. then they'll just be talking about when they're older like me. Yep. Like, oh, I remember the time my dad let us go bait the pond, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then somebody else hears that. And, yeah. so it wasn't even on their property either. It was on someone else's property. <laughs> so there's another one. There's trespassing. Yeah. <laughs> so they were yeah. trespassing? Or well, they, had they, they kind of had permission for a certain time of the, like they had it for early goose, not mm. for a regular duck. And I but could they see came where back. young people would be like, well, he must be fine if we would exactly yeah. they just assume so yeah, yeah right. absolutely yeah that's my my pipeline they assume yeah because their brothers and cousins and dads drove the pipeline illegally they assumed right. it was legal yeah. yes and like no I, I told one guy out and back i said do you use onyx i stopped his daughter and then he came up all huffy yeah and i really thought i was gonna have to use my jujitsu <laughs> he was half my age which throws the belt ranking way off <laughs> and he said yeah i use onyx and I said, well, why don't you pull it up on your phone and see whose property you're standing on? He says, I'm on the pipeline property. I said, no, you're not. You're on my property. And they just assume because yeah. everybody's done it. Even yeah. if it's pipeline, it's yeah. still illegal. It's, it's still, right. it, on top of that, yeah, they're on a high-pressure gas line. that yeah. They would love, the pipeline would love to catch them guys. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. But, all right, listen, we're going to hit pause here, and we're going to try to stump the COs <laughs> with a little trivia. It's going to be easy. <laughs> it's going to be easy to stump <laughs> you?